Usa. A very necessary Usa on this Usa Wednesday. And that is we are on November. Wait, we're on December. See, look at me. <laughs> It's like, what day of the week is it? It's December 6th, 12th, 6th, 2023. And before we begin, I'm in a solution. Can you go ahead and make this a sacred, safe place for us to elevate? Yes. We thank you. We thank you most high for these infinite possibilities and opportunities to exist and evolve and transform. We thank you most high for giving us this ability to claim this time, this place, this space as protected energy. In your name, we enjoy this courage, this courage, this 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 wholeness. Ache, 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 ache. Ache, ache, trece, ache, trece. We have on the panel, ladies and gentlemen, today on this fantastic day. Wait, before I get to the panel, you're listening to the sounds of the solar plexus. The solar plexus chakra is what we're focusing on today's topic of perception. Are you able to apologize? Is apologizing difficult? Are you perfect? Is accountability difficult? For you, the solar plexus is your chakra that exists right above the sacral chakra. This solar plex vibrates to the color yellow. The ancient Sanskrit name for the solar plexus is Manipura. It's located around or slightly above the navel. It's our main power center. It represents our free will, and it is where we draw the energy for our personal power, confidence, courage, strength. It reflects the emotional body and our desire to attain a healthy self-esteem. So this, is, this relates to inner strength, self-mastery, determination, empowerment, confidence, self-discipline, free will, courage, freedom, emotional balance, and appropriate self-discipline. So, ladies and gentlemen, today to discuss this solution. And it is stimulated by the, well, one one is the pyrite. The stone pyrite, pyrite. absolutely. It makes makes me think of the color gold. I think of, I minister OJME. Absolutely. (laughs) The gold liquid all the time I... I think it's a soul. The gold liquid. And gold. he's talking about the lo- gold liquid because the gold liquid is in the house. When you got that glow, <laughs> you feel the... P- anyway. Along with I'm Minister Ready, we have I'm Minister... We have a new one on the panel today. Yes. We have I'm Minister Jermaine yeah. Younger. The big 5-1. The big 5-1. Yeah. Goes way back, way back. Yeah. Welcome to the panel, I'm Minister Jermaine. Yes, yes. The big 5-1. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Buenos dias. Yeah. Good day. Buenos dias, man. And, and we have in the. No worries. No worries. Um, we have in the chat today. I Jameson Beverly. I'm Minister Jameson Beverly. Uh-huh. And um, oh, we have someone else that just rang in. Hey. Yes. I'm Minister Symphony. Hola, welcome, I'm Minister Symphony. So we are going to get into it today. The um the discussion, the topic is are you what did I what did I write there? First let me just say, I gotta take a big old giant woo sa. Yes. Woo sa you know what? And and that makes sense be and that I would like to, if it's possible, if we can mute our phones, if we're not talking, I don't know if that is possible. Yes. If that, you are, that'll definitely make the recording that much more cleaner. Yes. If right. you're not, if you're not 
saying anything, go on and mute your line so that we don't have any noise on the line. Thank you so much. And this is our, um, we're on a different, we're on a different number. And um, so we're trying something new today for the energy that has been bought forth. And this is a challenge of being able to flow in your space. Let me just share really quickly what happens and what I just worked through. And thank you to I Minister Solution for his complete support. When I go, when it's time to broadcast something, my mind immediately goes back to the old days when I was in traditional 103.5, radio. 103.5, 103.5, 5, 5, the bomb, 97.7. What, 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 what was her name who got mad when you, you um, took, got the tickets? What was her name? You, you you felt like you had an overseer. And, what, are you, you talking about talking Kaywin? About, yeah, no. Oh, when I got the tickets and 103.5, yeah. yeah. So there was always an overseer, an overseer. especially in oh. these industries yes. of entertainment and, yes. you know, media. So if I were, if I was late, if there was any dead time, dead time is what they call, you if you go over, if, there, if there's silent time on air and and it's over like five seconds that's dead time and you can get fired for that shit you did so yeah if you are late for work on um to be on the air you can get fired for that like there's just so many things that happen and then technical difficulties on the air are you kidding me you know so it's like having had that background yeah, of course, because what happens is when not you have sponsors. corporate sponsors that are paying, then they'll pull their money if things are not right. But see, my mind was still conditioned to a way of having to answer to that kind of production level. To to an extent, I, I appreciate that because I'm very professional. I don't like being late. I don't, you know, and it's like, and I appreciate if it's just one person that I made an appointment with, that one person is everything. So it's like, I'm not trying to waste anybody's time. I'm not trying to, you know, do anything that is going to take someone out of their comfort. But at the end of the day, we recognize that sometimes things happen and we have to flow in these situations and allow for new things to come about through these challenges that make us feel like, oh my gosh, my life is going to be over. And that's what I love about you because you see the value in every, everyone is a superstar. Everyone is a celebrity. You know, everyone is, their time is honored. So I really see that in you and always appreciated that. And that's, 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 that's that liquid gold. Oh, thank you, puppy. All right. Let's go. So we're gonna we're gonna get started with the topic and it's um this topic came about we've been talking about perception for the past month. All of November we talked about You said we're gonna do perception part three thousand and seventy two. <laughs> right now we are at per, per, perception part four. Are you perfect? Is apologizing difficult for you? And let's just go down and let's start with our with our guest, I Minister Jermaine. Yes. Is apologizing difficult for you? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I mean that's apologizing is part of being responsible and being accountable. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you can't if you can't apologize for something, then I don't know, you, 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 you something wrong. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, here's the thing about apologizing. Try not to do things that you will have to apologize about or for. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Try to go try, try to go about things in a way that to which, you know what I mean, so that you don't have to always hear yourself saying sorry or you know, I apologize you know, choose, choose, choose words, whatever, whatever, that keep you on a on a on a, a even keel to where you you know you're at that balanced level to where you, there, there's no oh I'm 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Or, you know, but if you got to, you got to. Yes, yes, got it. Got it, great. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I don't want to get ripped. We want to keep going down the, 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 the panel. I believe, and this is going to be great, because, well, I'm not even going to say anything. No. Next, 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 no, no, no. I, I want to see how it plays out. Okay, okay, okay. My bad. Okay, so... So, all right. So let's go. Let's go down the line, and let's just let's just say that let's be there is no there is no wrong answer. Nobody is going to be judged for their answer because it's important to recognize both sides of this this discussion. And we would think that oh yeah, I I, I can apologize for anything. Now you have people <laughs> that they are going to apologize for anything, but now do they really mean it? Mm. Just like, you know, right. I mean, this is just mentioned. It's Sometimes like... It's just the thing to say. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. To, to, make, to make, you know, make yourself sound a certain way or, or to, you know, make somebody feel good, but... Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's one of those things. Yes. And this is what we're wanting to get into deeply today, because the thing about it is, is that an apology, one, is not just for the person that you are apologizing to. It is truly for yourself. It is truly for yourself. And so if it is not authentic, it's not going to work. You're messing up with, you're messing with the formula. So thank you for that. I'm Minister Jermaine. I'm Minister... Oye, Yemi, is it, is it, and has it always been easy for you to apologize? The gold liquid takes a little, because it's thick. Yeah. So when the gold liquid yeah. is thick, That's it has real. to, you know, when, when you it's coming that through gold, that line. Yeah. Then it comes to the line, it got to thin itself out yeah. so that it could get. But here it comes. It's a process. I can feel it. Warm up. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. It's gotta like raise, honey. Gotta raise that tip. Yeah. Like, like honey. Right. <laughs> it's like that butt and rice. Yeah, all you already know. The hotter it gets, the better it spread, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a possibility Ooh, well, that maybe. I thought that I'm in the OGM was here. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we can okay, no, wait. We, I'm a, we do have I'm in the city. Okay, I know. We, I know that I'm in the symphony is on the line. Yeah. I'm in the symphony. A po- it, I'm in the symphony is a mother. She's also a wife. Yes. You know what I'm saying? She's yeah. a, 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 a all of these things. So, the question for you, I'm in a symphony. Is it difficult for you to apologize to your offspring, to your seeds? I'm going to say that it has gotten easier for me. Um, apologizing has been something that's been difficult for me on my journey. Only because I don't be feeling like I'm in the wrong. And not to say it is perfect all the time, but I just feel like I respond to things the way that they're given. And if they're given a certain type of way, I'm going to respond that same type of way. And I understand that's wrong on my part, especially to my children, because they are children and I'm supposed to lead by example. So it has gotten easier for me to apologize to my children, especially my older ones. Like um, just last week, me and my older one, my oldest, we had some words. And then within a minute, I called her back and I apologized. And she was just like taken aback because she wasn't so used to me responding so quickly. Mm -hmm. And I usually take my time to mull things over, to like play them out in my head. And then to like come away from my emotions and my feelings and then to look at it from the outside. So that might take a while. And then after the situation has died down, I'll go back and I'll speak to them about my behavior. But at the same time, it takes me that, 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 that sequence of 
having to play it out and all of that. So it's been difficult because I haven't been able to do it right on or like um, our guest said to avoid certain things beforehand in order to not have to apologize. Mm -hmm. But that is something that I'm working on within myself because for a very long time, I did think I was perfect. And I always felt like what's done was done. The universe allowed it to be done, and that's it. (laughs) (laughs) And I was one of those people that apologized, like, um, where I apologized so that, like I guess that earlier as well, so that the, the other party would feel better. It's not that I felt like I was in the wrong. I just mm-hmm. felt that they received it <laughs> in a, a way that was hurtful to them mm-hmm. or um, it messed with their feelings. But I, I meant what I said. So I would <laughs> apologize saying, like, I'm sorry you felt this way or I apologize that I did such and such and it made you feel this way. And along my journey, I've come to realize that that actually isn't an apology. Right. So I've been really working on that. <laughs> but, um, I've come to a place where I understand that regardless to what actions are or I, I feel are portrayed upon me, I still have the responsibility to take accountability and take my time beforehand and respond in a proper way that doesn't hurt feelings. So, yes, apologizing has been a task for me because, like I said, I feel like things go the way they're supposed to go. If you don't want me to slap you, don't hit me. (laughs) 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 I'm not going to apologize for smacking you after you hit me. I I see where I need to apologize for that act. Mm -hmm. But I also see where if I didn't put myself in the situation for it to get that far where we both have to come to blows, then an apology wouldn't be needed on my behalf. So it goes back to being self-aware to the point where I am now intentional with my words and how I come across in order not to offend my children especially and or my spouse. But sometimes they be trying it and it's <laughs> what it is. So is really is like a, it's a... It's a, a, a wake-up call for me because it, it keeps me aligned with what I really want to present myself to be aligned with what I feel that I should represent to my children. So I have taken a, a job to apologize for them more so, so that way they still come speaking to me about all kinds of different things. So they don't think that I'm going to react some way or another way. So um, apologizing is something that we do a lot nowadays, especially my children. They'll come out, my youngest boy, he'll come to me and he's like, Mommy, I'm sorry I did this. You know, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't want to make you feel this way or however it goes. So Mm -hmm. yeah, apologizing has been something that has been difficult for me. And I'm still learning that saying certain words are not full apology and that how um, body said being authentic like I'm not going to apologize if I don't feel like I'm sorry like if I don't feel like this is something I'm not going to do again or this is not a way I'm going to respond in the future I'm not going to apologize for it especially if it's something that I've done before and I've continued to do that I still haven't healed in that pattern I'm not going to apologize for it because I feel like then it's wasted words and it just looks bad on me. So I just try more to be mindful of my action. Like, I'm I'm really mindful as to how I behave versus me trying to fix things with words. That's fantastic. That's where I'm at with it. That is fantastic. <laughs> yes. And, you know, it's a really powerful thing because I had an experience and this experience started with the grand rising on the of the matriarch um a couple there's we're, we're getting some really loud background if you're not speaking please mute your line thank you gracias so in this when we did the um the grand rising of the matriarch they were talking about forgiveness 
and they were talking about forgiveness and how important forgiveness is not just for you. You know, it's, it's important for the, you know, to forgive the person that you're forgiving, but of course it's for yourself and being able to forgive and release things. And so I needed, I thought that I needed, um, for my mother to apologize for where, for our relationship and be accountable for where she was. And, you know, and I would be accountable for, you know, for us to both take accountability and everything. And then I had a reconnection with my mom after I sent a letter to, because I've been, I I have not talked to my um, blood family in a very, very long time until recently. And it was, you know, work, we, we have to do this work when we're, when we're going on this journey of forgiveness and releasing. And so I sent a letter to both of my sisters that I haven't, hadn't spoken to in over what, 14 years. And so when that happened, when that happened, I, um, one of the sisters went ahead and accepted the apology. The other sister did not respond, not at all, you know? And then it's like, you have to ask yourself, what do I need from this? What is, and so when I did it, I did it for myself without any expectation of anything, but the result definitely was, um, was very clearing and it showed for things, things for what they were. And then when I connected to my mom, you know, I realized that some people are just unable to, they're not, they're not in a position to where they're able to even get there. So much damage has been done to them. So much damage has been done that they're unable to even get to a point of clarity where an apology could even come out of their mouth. What I'm in a symphony was talking about in terms of, yeah, I said what I said. So I come from a mom that's from that space of I'm the mother. So what it is what it is. Deal with it. And, you know, apologize for what, Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's, it's that energy that whatever it is that you are programmed with, that you have to then unprogram, deprogram so that you can have a different experience. And so, you know, one of my sisters accepted the apology. We were able to talk and we're, we're in communication to this day. Um, I, I, you know, I'm not going to say her name. I'm not trying to put her on the spot or anything, but she knows who she is. The name and is I love not you. about it. It's and I appreciate the, you. It's, a, it's not about names, titles, distinctions, uh, labels, uh, whatever terms that are used as adjectives to describe these energies. We talking about the energy. Well, that's what I'm talking about. I received. Probably you talking about that too. Yeah, 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 I am. I just want to um send a, if if she happens to be yes. listening to know that I love her Most and I definitely. love the I, I love the um the curses that we've broken those generational. Yes curses that they talk about and love that's that. what this is about love because that. it's like all of us are here based on our experience and we're able to relate because we have had such toxic experiences that have led us to this space where now we have to undo what's been done and it's <laughs> our choice to do it so i mean it's a solution I'm just thinking about i speak and, and i speak to such I, i'm so honored to 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 experience such energies and hear the challenge and I and I talk to them and I hear how hard it is I hear you know the the soul has been involved in this trauma I hear the the pain I hear the the challenge that they forge through and it's interesting because I as I hear them I respect and honor them so much but at the same time, being their teammate in this, I have to look at them and say, listen, at the end of the day, there does become a time where it is your choice now to say, I'm going to 
to to not hold on to this scenario. I'm going to release it and detach it and forgive it and say I'm better for it. And now I'm going to rise above. I'm going to, it's almost like they fight to hold on to it. Mm-hmm. While I'm talking to them, like, I hear you. And, and they're even... They're even agreeing with me saying that this is, oh man, this 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 woman is bad for me. Oh, this situation just is not cool for me. Oh, this just ain't right, man. I'm not feeling comfortable. You know, they they not picking up behind themselves or or she's not acknowledging me. And I'm like, well, if that's what it is and you know that, then why don't, you know, why don't we address this? You know, why don't we go ahead and and embrace that discomfort? And, and, and walk through that challenge and move forward and move to the higher side of it. Do you remember that song? How for me to say I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's a difficult thing yeah. for people to... Ex- wanna, Go ahead. I was just... I want to um, speak on that. I want to say that this, um, this seated... Uh, or not inability, but uh, the the challenges that I face um, apologizing, I realize come from the fact that I, I come from a very strict Haitian background who was also raised in a uh, religious Jehovah's Witness. And I've come to realize that a lot of my ways of not being able to express myself um, emotionally has come from the fact that I was never apologized to as a child. Mm-hmm. I was never taught that, hey, mm-hmm. um, mom and dad or family members or church members are not perfect and they mess up too and they make mistakes and this may have affected you this way as their child and, you know, this is what we'll do differently next time. Like, I was never taught that formula, that this will happen this this is how it affected you, and this is how do we change the narrative. So that's something that I've had to come to grips with myself without any family, without any, you know, mm-hmm. group or any anything. This is something that I had to learn through with child and error. Like I said, I have five children, and it's now that my oldest, she's about to be 21, that we're on a page where we're able to communicate fluently mm-hmm. where we um, take accountability for our mistakes. So I'm breaking general generational curses um, by learning from my own trauma. So I just want to say thank you, um, our Minister Solution, for pointing that out because it's a choice that I now consciously make to better myself and to be better for my children so that they won't have to feel the same way that I felt as a child, isolated with, you know, no one's listening and no one cares or anything like that. So wow. thank you for pointing that out. Oh, you, it's a, a choice that I choose. Oh, you, you, you so... Get yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, yes, Rusa. <laughs> I, I, I was I was about to say you you are so welcome. Some somebody is, is muted. It, it's our minister Jermaine. I don't know. He in, <laughs> he in his spaceship. <laughs> and his spaceship is having technical difficulties. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I thought I was getting buzzed into the prices right. I was about to be like, "Look, man, my what is that? When, when you have, when you make that to make your um, your choice, not your choice, your bid. Your bid. I was about to make my bid. Uh, go ahead. But I was gonna say that you sharing your 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 truth like that in its most authentic, organic expression is huge. When I say that, is like so powerful for me and so honoring and as a teammate for me to see that it's like i gotta be ready now to or or at least be available to whomever says look man solution you this this is something like to look at you know what i mean right. you know it, it makes it so now we can address these issues as teammates i know y'all can get with sports y'all love well well maybe you know, so I know some of y'all can, can get get to get with sports, and it's like for me, it's like us being in this games competition of life. This is self mastery. This this self mastery competition. If we're teammates and we're able to talk to one another in real truth 
and know that it's coming from a place of love, we can hold each other accountable and we can really get better. We really can advance in this in this um, challenge, in this competition of life. So so I, I, I applaud you and I appreciate you for sharing. And thank you. I'd like to say that because on the on the vein of perception, it is important, and this is what we do it at, at you know I'm in issues of master vibration thirteen is that I'm in a solution is an athlete. I'm sure I'm in a Jermaine could probably really relate to that as well. I don't consider myself an athlete, so for me, it's a different perception in terms of how the world, the whole competition thing that, that, like that, i ain't competing with nobody but and, myself and that and that's why you're an athlete that's all you are that, that's Wait, all this is i'm Uh-oh. mr jermaine is buzzing in go ahead he buzzing in man bob barker is really gonna show up we gonna have to uh have him come on the, the night the night side no go ahead i'm mr jermaine <laughs> go ahead you got the floor <laughs> so yeah hey Get to a spot, but um, going on the uh, the thing about sports, and but I, I, you guys were breaking up. I, I mean, I okay, no worries, no now. worries. Yeah, I can believe it. No yeah. worries. Yeah, it's sounding really buzzy. Yeah, on your end as well. We might so. Have- so no say, worries. Just he, try to listen he, in. If he wants to call in, call back in. And try to call back. Or or maybe hang up and call back on the yeah. line. Hang up and call back Call back and see. Hold on. Hold on. Shoot. Okay. Just give me a second. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. I, I missed the solution you were saying. So what I was saying... And going back to us just sharing our experiences and being an athlete, it's it's interesting because I I am that personality that's always kind of being pushy, mm-hmm. trying to just get. But but I look at everyone as athletes. Like I used to look at my clients as man, my clients that would come in with three hundred fifty pounds, and they and they and and they are nowhere near what they're supposed to be, and they got to get to a hundred and thirty. I see them as the most professional athlete. I have so much <laughs> respect. <laughs> we gonna have to put him. We gonna have to put him on the sideline. We gonna have to put you on the sideline, Big Five One, until your situation is cleared up. That's what we are gonna have to do. I, I know you can understand that. Am I? Am I? Am I? Yes, we hear. We we it's hear buzzing like nobody's business. So. We're going to have to wait till you get situated and have you back again because we show sure love your energy. Yes. yes that's, uh, and that's what I'm what, what I'm speaking on, too, is just that that perception right. of your that's how you see yeah. the world. Yeah. And so that's the way challenge. that a, that's that the way that a person is yeah. and the way that a person perceives things is the way that they're going yes. to project. Yeah. And so for me, it's. You know, I've we, always seen you as an athlete. Well, I, I fell in love with the athlete that you are because you are so determined. You know, as a kid, when I know your story and I know what 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 built you, I was like, man. And then, and, and just the way you express yourself in working out, you're disciplined when you work out. You you focused. You driven. You passionate. And I was a cheerleader, y'all. Now, <laughs> like, I was gonna say that. I don't know if that's an athlete. So you can't see. You start messing up my situation when I. Yeah, all right. I have I'm, to I'm, I have to get to this because this is yes. a very important point. Okay. I'm in mean, symphony talked about how um and, and this is no jab against anybody's religion, but she talked about being Jehovah Witness. Right. And it's really interesting because I Minister Reddy also grew up Jehovah Witness. Right. So I wanted to bring her on and see how she feels about this subject and if she connects to where I Minister Reddy was in that regard of apologizing and coming from that specific type of religion. I'm Minister Reddy, are you with us? Good day, greetings. Good day, Hola. good day. Hola, Saki. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, so I am here um, 
And yes, it is true. I also grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, not religious, religion. And I've experienced a lot of things in that religion from across states because me and my mom moved a bit around. So, oh, that's a, that is a charm. This is more than itself. But when it comes to forgiveness, or excuse me, apologizing, I don't have an issue with apologizing. My conscience pretty much gets real active when I reflect and realize that I have done something that either harmed someone or hurt their feelings or something like that. And more so when I feel like I have done something that I know is outside of my character and that is going to create some common for me that I'm going to have to deal with later, I'm, I am ready, ready, ready <laughs> to apologize in that regard. And Growing up as a Jehovah's Witness, there were certain things that happened in which I did not get apologized. I, I didn't receive an apology. So on the flip side with that, that helped me to evolve into a place where if somebody does something to me that I didn't appreciate or I felt was wrong and I didn't receive an po- apology from them, not to hold on to that and not to treat other people in a certain type of way because of what I had already experienced mm-hmm. with people. It took me a minute to allow people to come back Mm-hmm. into my inner circle as a child because I was more concerned that people were going to or friends or associates were going to be mistrustful or I would be scared to open up and say some things because I was concerned about my business being traveled upon different ears. But now I'm in a different place. I'm still very private. I think mm-hmm. that's just a part of me. I've always been very particular of like what I'm sharing with people. You know, generally people, not my friends, friends, not my Agnes, my sisters, my mommies, my E.I. Right. But that part has has helped me to grow as far as like, hmm, I think it was, I know it was mentioned earlier that the apology is not always for the other person, it's for you. Mm-hmm. And if that person hasn't apologized, that can mean that they're stuck somewhere. And that doesn't yes. mean I have to be stuck into that emotion, too. Right. And I don't have to hold that and carry that and all of that. So that has been my experience with not being apologized to it and mm-hmm. growing from that. And then also being ready to apologize in the same in the same context. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That is so, so powerful. Because people see, if I can say this for others, well, this is others that I've experienced. If you're apologizing, you're weak. You lost. You you, you apologize. You're going to let them win? I had a family member. I said, look, man, you and your father have this challenge, and you guys are at a point where if you can just be humble, give grace, and allow his reality to exist, I'm not saying he right. Well, he is right. He right from his perspective, but he ain't right with me, but I don't care. Just say, just tell him he right. Just tell him he he got it. He was like, man, I can't do that. I ain't you. I can't, man, I ain't, that's good for you, but that ain't, and I'm thinking to myself, that all falls along the lines of being apologetic, humility. It's just giving grace. But some people are not ready to give that grace. And there goes back to that space of That's being if you powerful. can't do it, yes. you can't do it. Yeah, I respect and even that. if somebody yes. else tells you to do it yes. and they're yes. where they, you know, you're where you are, yes. he's where he's at. Yes. And at least he's honest <laughs> with himself and he's telling you he cannot. He cannot and he will not. And I do respect that. And that's where it is great when you're, it is. 
You know what? It sounds like Darth Vader came came back with the lightsaber. He it sounds like he just cut people up like Luke Skywalker, hand flying off. I mean, Princess Leia, a little braid with the ball. He didn't kill and chopped her off. He just a chainsaw man. Now, now we gonna have to call you Chainsaw Man. Hey, is this, is this better? That's a little bit. I can yeah. When you're okay. talking, I can hear you. All right, Chainsaw. That's how he was on the field too. He was cutting him. That's how he was cutting everybody up on the field too. He wasn't no joke. So so yeah. So, oh, I didn't know. I didn't hear. Go ahead, Jermaine. No, I'm just try, I'm just trying to get back in and be clear and stop messing everything up. Okay, cool. Yeah, no, you good. It is appreciated. Good. It sounds very clear now. You good. You good. We appreciate just, that. Okay, cool. You know. Well, I'm gonna stop right here, Ryan. Okay, good job. You know, when it comes to the whole um, apologizing thing and recognizing that it's not, that it's, that it's about yourself, you know, just with, with your family member, it's like, you have to know, knowing where you are is just as important because people feel the, in, uh, the, the, what is it? The inauthenticness of this, yes. the, the, you if know. The, oh, if the apology is not, is not coming from a place of yeah substance. You like, you know, right. okay. As yeah. a woman, yes. you know, when your man is apologizing just because he wants to get it over with or he wants something <laughs> or, you know he, what I'm saying? He, to the, he, he really ain't even really seeing the apology. He already seeing to the yams. Can I get with the yams? There it is. Sweet. <laughs> and so now we're in this time in the world where you can see through all of it. Yes. If you're doing your work, if you're doing yes. your meditation, if you're paying attention to yourself and what's happening in this world, you will sense everything that's going yeah, on. Yeah. And you will, when a person comes in front of you, you will be able to feel their energy. Mm -hmm. And before they open their mouths, you know who they are. Mm -hmm. But if you're still, you know, we, there's still a lot of people that are really good at the, at the mask and masquerading themselves. But that's not lasting for long because you can't maintain the form anymore. You know, it's mm -hmm. like these reptilians and all of these things that, oh. you know, are existing and have existed on the planet. Oh. They're not, they, hey, the shapeshifters, they, 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 they losing their mojos in shifting their shape, their shape long enough for you to fall for it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being able to apologize to right. someone. And that's for what, And I would say, I, just, I had to jump real quick because I, I kept forgetting to hold yourself accountable that's a part of the apology saying that you had a part in this whole scenario. At the end of the day, I feel like I always can apologize from some perspective in this situation. I ain't never thought I'd been a hundred percent correct. So for me, that apology was never all that difficult because I played some part in it. That's just for me. So that's how I feel like it's easy to, go ahead and make that humble move to say, oh, I, will, I, I didn't quite hit the mark that I wanted to exist in in that. So could you please accept my apology? I was not doing what I, what is ethically, you know, I feel the right thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do have an, oh, it's about, I just wanted to make sure is our minister Ojayemi, She's is she on the line? All right, sending love and a big yeah. ache to our minister Ojayemi because she's always here. So if she's not here, that means that she had to be somewhere else. So ache sending love to her. Um, go ahead, our minister. Susan. I think getting to the getting to. Uh, a place of accountability and a place where you can apologize or at least see yourself. I, I always think to ask myself or place myself in the position of the person. Like, is it difficult for you to place yourself as the person that is existing in the scenario? You know what I'm, that is being, uh, so so called someone coming to you because if someone comes to you in a manner that you know the situation is uncomfortable anyway like it's certain things where if somebody coming to you to talk to you about mm -hmm. this they're like look I got to talk to you and both of y'all look at each other like 
oh, okay. Uh, when what what time we need to talk? A person uh, immediately goes to, yeah. what did I do? Yeah. What did happen? And that other person as well, though, and they, you know, at this point, it's gotten to that point where we have to look at each other as as, as people, and, and it's very well possible. Hopefully, we can look at each other as responsible, respectful, honorable uh, energies and and not allow the information that is being um, um, conversed uh, dictate some kind of eruption and it could be some kind of overstanding in regards to the passing of the information. But it's interesting when you think about somebody coming to you to address something and how uncomfortable it is and the person that is receiving that information is already on the defensive and they're not even allowing them to even get it out. So it's mm-hmm. difficult to even think of coming to a resolution in that scenario because the other person isn't allowing the communication to exist, so nothing can be uh, uh, ben- uh, of benefit. Mm-hmm. So it really is about both energies allowing both truths, I would say, in my opinion, to at least exist. And then you both can respectfully disagree and move forward in some kind of overstanding. But if somebody has to be right right, and somebody has to be wrong and somebody has to win and somebody has to lose, then oftentimes it just gets explosive and that's where the relationships often stop. I don't talk to him no more. We don't, we don't, we don't do that. I don't, I, don't, I don't talk to him. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because we don't have that infinite love that I love to, to handle all situations and we can respectfully disagree and move forward and still honor each other. And that's just something that we just aren't on the same page as. And this is coming because people don't have a full awareness and understanding of themselves. And so it makes it difficult to relate to anybody else. It goes back, you know, what you talked about with being able to take accountability is cause and effect. If somebody is coming to you, you know, because of something you've wronged them in a way then it is, it well, it should be, it would be who the person, it would benefit the person to listen to what the offense that was caused, what it is that happened, so that they can, you know, see what part, they played a part because someone is coming to you. And the whole, all of this is about the way that you feel about yourself. Yes. Do you honor yourself? When you honor yourself, you treat others in the same way because you recognize what it is. So it's like when it says, love thy neighbor, mm. you know, it's like it, it really goes into how you feel about yourself. I mean, a lot of people think that that phrase just meant that, you know, the person that lived next door, you got to love them because they your neighbor. But it goes a lot deeper than that. And it always goes back to yourself. Mm. The The kingdom is inside of you. The church wow. is you. All yeah. of these things go back into yourself. Yeah. So I want to touch on this point. And this is about what happens when you, when you do forgive and how it's not necessary to have that, um, you know, if the you other apply, person exactly. Saying, I, I accept it. Right. Man, we ain't got time yes. to wait on you. That is not a part of this process. Right. I'm listening. So when you are asking for forgiveness and you're doing it from a genuine place and it's for yourself, it is truly for yourself. And so when you release that, you have this feeling of release. It doesn't matter what the other person says. Yes. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, whether the the other person received it or accepted it. Yes. So I had the opportunity to apologize to my mother for all of the things that I've done to her for not being the best daughter that I could have been. Mm. And it was just really interesting because what it did is just kind of left her a little stuck. And then it, you know, went into different conversations and things. And what was good for me (laughs) is that I recognized that it was truly for me and I didn't need it back from her. And I was able to see, you know, where she was and truly just love her no matter what and love her through it. And what's really interesting about it is that this love 
that I gave her, that I give to her is really um, like she can't take it. She yeah. can't take it. She don't want it's too it. Powerful. And she don't. It's mm-hmm. that liquid gold. And I needed to go through that process completely, fully, so that I would never Ooh. feel again like, oh, what about my mom and my mom doesn't love me or my Throwing mom away this your heart, or huh? what? Yeah. You and gotta so, write that. You gotta write us. you gotta write that out. So it was a great, great thing for me to be able to go through that whole process of forgiveness, accountability. Yeah. And, you know, being able to receive what comes back through what it is that, that I put out and what came back to me, I was able to transform it every time. Yes, and so I'm not left with a feeling of hurt or pain. I can talk about it till this day. And that's the signal of when you're over things. Yes. If you can talk about things without it emotionally, you know, touching your gut and you feel it all yeah, like, oh, I have a my, question. I have you know. a question. Could, yes. could you do that? Like, I since can, this? Absolutely, I can. You was doing... So, I was like, oh, Poppy, why is this hard? It was, it was the most challenging thing I've ever gone through. like, you got a little through. fighter. You, 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 go, you, you just got to talk. You just got to address this. Listen, the discomfort that exists... Think about this. You can go through discomfort, we'll say, for 90 days. You guys are breaking up. Oh. Sorry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we were just saying, you can go through discomfort for 90 days. We'll say 90 days. Think about you not saying something, whatever that does, discomfort is, and going a lifetime. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lifetime. If you don't say something about this, you're going to go a lifetime. I, I was thinking to myself, forgiveness is the key to release and happiness. A hundred percent. It's like it, it, it's so it's so golden, you know. It, it it's it's interesting, and and people will use you you, you will, will you accept my apology? Will you when you you know you playing that you you being available to them having that power to finally do that? They will use that as power. I was attempting to apologize to someone because they told me that what I did made them feel uncomfortable and. And, and and they was holding on to this for years and they was trying to apologize and I was denying them the apology and they couldn't understand why. And they was going to drive and find me. I said, oh my goodness. They almost, they made me almost leave the room. I was like, I just was really being a A dollar sign, dollar sign hole and not trying not one bit to be available to your apology. I couldn't even understand that. So then I attempted to apologize to apologize and i saw that they were not even acknowledging me saying i with the utmost apology would like to express that i did not mean to trespass you in that manner because that sounds crazy of me if that was me i i was way out of bounds they weren't even attempting to hear my apology so after I said it like twice, I was about to say it the third time, and I was like, oh, we're about to be a word spell. I ain't saying it. I ain't apologizing no more. I'm good. I released that. We done. Anyway, I said, damn. But it's just interesting to see how these things are used as mind judo. All the time. People use these feelings and these acts of apology and forgiveness, and they hold on to them because they recognize the power in them subconsciously. They recognize the power in Mm -hmm. them, you know, just like, you know, parents use it all the time, the guilt and making, you know, people do stuff and making their children feel guilty for not doing stuff, not coming over Mm -hmm. for Thanksgiving dinner, whatever, but you know, all of these things are because I'm not talking to so-and-so because they still haven't apologized for what they did to me in grade school, you know, and so people hold on to a lot, a lot is in that whole, uh, vein of apology and forgiveness, Mm -hmm. you know? And so this is a topic that we can continue endlessly to discuss about apology and forgiveness and perfection. We didn't dive in too much into the perfection aspect, but let me just say this, that we are all perfect in our imperfections and being wrong is not wrong. It is okay 
to be wrong. That's how we learn. It is okay to fall. That's the opportunity to be right. That's the opportunity to, 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 to gain another level. That's the opportunity to evolve. That's an opportunity for expansion. I want to expand. I want to evolve because if I stay stagnant, I become extinct. I would like to give... I just wanna, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I just want to give the floor an opportunity to say your words as we close out today. I'm Minister, Re- uh, Minister Symphony. Uh, yes. Um, I did a... Uh, uh, it was like a live that I was with uh, someone in the conscious community and one of their mantras that they gave to us at the end of the live to say was that I forgive myself and others for imperfection. So piggybacking off of what you just said, we are perfect in our own imperfection. It's something that I try to um, I keep in my Rolodex of mantras or affirmations or however you want to call them to stay in my mind and it's just you know every step throughout the day is I forgive myself and I forgive others for imperfection so learning to um, allow others like you said not to use that judo mind trick on you where even if they don't apologize or if they don't accept your apology or like regardless if the words are spoken in the airwaves the frequency in my my heart and mind every day is that I forgive myself number one for anything that I have done to anyone else or what I've done to myself and then I forgive others and I find that um saying that mantra or keeping that frequency in my mind actually helps me to deal with those situations where an apology might not have been said or uh, an an apology might be warranted or it's not on the horizon. However it may go, it's something that allows me to continue to deal with those um, situations objectively because I've already apologized to myself and I've already, already apologized for you as well. So therefore, the situation can now have a clearer scope and I'm able to just manage during that time because the 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 heaviness or the guilt is already taken off. So whatever that person is carrying stays with them and the energy of forgiveness and being okay with the situation now comes with me. So just wanted to share that mantra. I, I apologize like for myself and others for imperfections. I apologize to myself mm. and others for their for for imperfections. I apologize for myself and others for our imperfections. For our imperfections or for just imperfections? For just imperfections. It doesn't okay. matter. We don't label who it goes to. We don't place a who was right or who was wrong. I just I apologize to myself and then I apologize to others. For, for imperfections. Imperfection. Whichever way the imperfection may have landed. We don't Myself, others, and perfection. That's I like it. that. And we just release it all. Mm. I like that a, a lot. Like Thank that. you. I'm Minister Symphony. I'm Minister Ready. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she popping popcorn. I was about to be like, we had to move it. What? Oh, she doing it. She in Amish times. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Sister Reddy, you are my champion. <laughs> I that's, love you. Wait, that's so love hilarious you. because I was like, oh. are they are, are they riding the same <laughs> shit? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm in the Mercado wagon. Wow. That's what's up, though. I, I, I can appreciate that in a, in a whole other way. I can appreciate that. 
you know, it's definitely that we're, that's where we want to go. Well, I don't know if you pretend you want to go around, but I, yeah, I, that's where we want to go. People trying to ride in electric cars where somebody can control it autonomously. Yeah, yeah, and it we, won't be your boy. I minister, I minister Jermaine. What are your what are your words about this topic that you would like to leave us with today? Definitely makes sense. I like that. Yeah, they done tan- they, done, they done teamed up now. Listen to them. They, the the, they, the they, ship people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, ship the, with the, a P. The, the aliens. Going into, um, they the aliens. One thing, and she, that, she just brought up a uh, point that we used to uh, say in sports about um, practice. She said, "What what what makes." Um, a good what did it say a, a good um, shoot I forget but it was perfect practice it wasn't about being perfect during the game but it, it was perfect practice Maybe yeah yeah if, if you a good game you know what I mean mm-hmm. yes because you can I mean perfect practice you can you, you, huh no continue so she, Oh, no, I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, because, you know, you can control the practice environment. So, yeah. you know, you, you make it perfect. Once you have a perfect practice and, you know, you feel good, you feel confident, then you go into the game. And like I said, if you, you're going to strive for that same perfection. Yeah. It, it's probably not going to happen, but yeah. you, you, you'll probably be a lot more successful. Yes, sir. Than you would if, you know what I mean? No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. You know that. And I'm so glad that you talked about that because next Woosa Wednesday, we're going to be talking about your practice, your spiritual practice. And so that's what gonna, that's what's going to be the topic for next week because a lot of people do believe that, you know, perfection is, is, is being this perfect being. And so we're going to get into that further uh, next week because that's definitely what, what? I'm in a solution. Notes. I'm in a solution. Still has some notes. Those of you that want to say that want to stick around no, for I'm the just, notes, yeah, just, you stick around for I'm the notes. No, say what you gotta say. <laughs> no. Look, and this is what's look. I'm gonna tell y'all what happens, right? So he says he got <laughs> no, some no, notes, no, right? No, no, like, say what I'm gonna say. And as down. soon as I tell him, I was, I was no, but, 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 no, you messed up. So please be quiet. So, let me just tell y'all what happened last <laughs> night, okay? What? So, this man, we were supposed to go to karaoke last night. I was going to go. But, okay, okay, okay. Just, uh, shush, 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 shush. So, so, he never, ever, ever, we've been karaoke in forever, all the time. We do it in the house. We do it, you know. And every time, even in the house, we're like, okay, you're going to do a song? Nope. Nope, nope. <laughs> so last night we, we we went to the beach. We were with Jim Maja yesterday. We had a great time. And so then when we was, you know, rolling back, we was like, all right, are we gonna go to to karaoke to karaoke? And then everybody was really tired, and he knew everybody was really tired. I didn't know so everybody he was, was like that tired. But once we was just like, oh, no, we're so gonna pass. Oh. He gonna be like, oh, the day I was gonna uh, he so was gonna do know, my I pony. Said, I said that way sooner. <laughs> That's wrong. Y'all. That's what that's he what you said. Okay, that, so that, that was, that was, that was my perception. That was strate- okay, well, my perception that. was that he was that. being very strategic. And he that. decided it had that. To, it had to be like that, though. He so every time that. this man gets put on the spot, no, like then that. it's like, oh. I don't like that. Only, only unless it's like third and ten. I'm like, look, man, let me let me get that thing. Oh, um, it, it, It's from here. So if you have something to yeah, say, go ahead. Nah. So what I was saying... <laughs> Was I was I, I was I wanted to share with with everyone listening that giving these energies patience and grace is a big part of this, uh, or being able to forgive them. Think about how these energies have been created 
and what type of trauma had to be around them and even us yes. to in forgiving us to to gain that type of forgiveness that is infinite you know just like our energy is in, infinite forgiveness is, is infinite yes. love is infinite yes excuses are infinite but then on the flip side discipline and determination is infinite so you just it's just about your choice yes i'm so glad that you said that i'm in a solution because that's a huge part of it is recognizing that we've all been damaged all of us all of us yeah so it's like you know having an expectation for somebody to be somewhere just because you're there, right. nah, we yeah. have to have grace and nah. know that we're, it's, it's wartime and the war is for our soul. Well, now, when you say that, though, I can't say, I can't say I'm pushy. I am, I am pushy, but I'm pushy with no expectation because I, I do see, I see the, the champion in, in everyone and I see people already doing it. And but but I'm not disappointed. I'm not. You, I, I, all I can say is, oftentimes when they're saying I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I was talking to this this brother. He said, "I'm trying, man. I'm trying." I said, trying means you're not I, doing I, it. I, I said, "But but you said you try, but you you saying that you agree with me. So it's like you holding on to a turd, man." I said, "Man, I know you strong. I know you. I, I just you." You not you put the turd down, man. I'm trying. Man. I said, every time you say you're trying, you holding the turd, man. You smarter than that, man. I know you're not holding the turd. I man, I'm just I'm trying. I said, man, I just can't believe that you gonna get off the phone with me with that turd in your hand because you know it's bad, but you saying you trying to release it and you just won't let it go because you just want to hold on to something like luck like, that's just so like that. So I was like, all right, man. So I'm pushy, but I still do respect one's fight. I love to fight. I, I love the boxing game and everyone's in their own little boxing match and they're doing their thing. And I, I, I love to just see how it's going to play out. So I respect the, the, the universe's way of determining where that energy exists as far as in their victory or win or how they choose to explain that master vibration 13.com this is where you can come and get whatever energy you resonate with i look i'm in a solution is his background and his experience is what makes him who he is and i'm in a serenity her yeah. background her experience is what makes her who she is. Yes. I'm in a symphony. Her background, her experience in life is what makes her who she is. And the same goes for all of us here on this panel. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and it's very, say that again. Say that again. I say shout out to Big 51. His experience has made him who he is. I chat yes. big five one. Big five that is a, look. I, I have to say because see you're 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 new to everyone else. I'm innocent. Could I share how we met real quick? Yes, because I do want to. Okay. I know that see here in the in in the in the layer, a lot of people be hearing new voices, especially people that are here all the time. Can and everyone they hear, mute your phone if you're not talking, so we don't we can have a clear. We definitely had a great show, and they hear this. That was and then she said, "Look." Oh, she put, she put, she said, she put it on blast. She that, said that would be that would be. I mean, it's the fifty one. Yeah, okay. All right, big five one. Big five one. Put your phone on blast, so when I talk about you, you they can, can hear, hear it. They can hear my experience, and then we're gonna bring you right back on. Yes, mute your phone. Okay. All right. So there are in this journey of infinionaire ministers. These are ministers that. Um, that are infinite beings that recognize that we are direct extensions of source and we express our lives as I ministers, uh, ministering through example, ministering through our own experiences. So this is not anything like a traditional religion. We are our own religion and we practice our life experience. And so when I ministers come onto this platform and we um, shout them out as I ministers, you best believe that they recognize the power of their infinite being and they are 
living as yeah. examples of that. And so yeah. I minister Jermaine, I minister the big five one. Big five one. It is um someone who has been on the journey with I Minister Solution yeah. for years. Yeah. And years and years. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and yield the floor um to I Minister Solution so that you can share yeah, your so, story. So my first meeting with the big five one i was on my recruiting trip to utah state and i'm a a, a highly you know workaholic athletic you know thinking that ooh, i've been you know i've been i've been sharpening my sword you know, I'm, I'm ready I, i've been going after this so i'm i'm up there we we all go to play pickup basketball and so we play pickup basketball with some of the guys that are already at utah state uh, Jermaine, the big five one, he was one of them. So we playing against the older guys. Well, not even before, before we even start, it was funny because the big five one, you know, he's standing like six one at this time, probably 250 pounds. Right. And he looks literally like, a a a a, a well sculpted, um, um, grizzly bear. <laughs> so, the big five one before the, before the game start. Okay, we all got our teams right. He on the other team. He grabs the ball. He bounces it off the ground, off the off the, off the floor. Ball bounces off the off the 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 backboard. He jumps up at six one two hundred fifty pounds. Grabs it, pulls it back, and throws it through the rim. <laughs> so me thinking at five ten. 175 pounds. I'm thinking that instrument is going to be trying to tackle and hurt me and, <laughs> and hit me. I was thinking to myself, oh, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't even know. I said, I said it was like seeing something that was so graceful, but something so be so powerful. It's like that just ain't supposed to exist. So that was my first meeting of the Big Five One. And since then, man, I remember him just... Man, he one day I was I was dropping balls and in 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 practice and, and it was in the game. It was one I just remember this so vividly, and I just remember him telling me really just to get out of my head and shake it off because we need you. And at that point there, it just that stuck with me, and I and I always knew him for that. So it's interesting, you know, when you, you know, what things are, what kind of trauma and how they can, you know, impact you when your teammate yes. is there for you and, and both sides. Cause there are other times where he'll say, Hey man, get the shit together. We need you. Right. You got make this shit happen. And I need it said like that. Yeah. I need him to, I need him to, I need him to, to make me do it. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, no, 13 breaths right. before your show. Yeah. You looked at me like, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was He like, makes oh. me do stuff, and um, I did it, though. I was like, oh. Yeah, you looked at me, and I was like, no, take your 13 breaths <laughs> for this show. Get your center. But so, that's how you got to say it with yes, the ring. Yes, and it is greatly appreciated. And with that, let's yes. give the official yes. welcome to I Minister, the big Five one. Yeah, this is the main yeah, younger. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. Listen, I, I just want to say, man, hey, I knew I, I knew you was a special dude, and that's why I took the time to, you know, just give you some encouraging words because I watched you, I see how you move, I knew you, you know. He's a special guy, so of course, you know, I'm gonna reach out with that, with with that, with that positive energy, man. Because I, I mean, it's easy, like you said, coming from where you came from, you know, feeling that you were ready, and you were, you know what I mean. But you were just in a new environment, and shoot, all you need, you know, that's all you needed. And it, and it's funny though, because I'm just doing it as a guy that understands, you know, another guy working hard, feeling ready, going through something, not really understanding the fact that, okay, I'm, I'm like you said, this guy, you know, that's been labeled as, you know, almost like holier than thou, but, you know, and, and I don't mean that in a, in a conceited kind of way, but I was, 
you know, a main part of our of our team of our defense. But you know, I, man, I say I still to this day when I, I I meet people up here and I talk to people and tell them, you know, that I played, and they're like, man, we 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 remember you. You you were you know you played so well. We enjoyed it, and and, and I mean, I listen. There's this young man that when me and our quarterback at the time, Anthony Calvillo, we did a book signing at an elementary school. I met that young man, what, about five years ago. He was like, what, 30-something years old. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't remember him from Adam, but he remembered me. He came up to me and, and just told me how much of an impact I had on him. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I, I I don't know, man. Yes, just, you yes. know, it's just, it's just yeah. me. Yeah. And it's funny that you get, you get, you know, you get these labels, you get these, you know, titles or whatever. And a lot of people, they, they, they let it go to their heads and they just become different. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they take on these different energies and whatnot. And it's like, it's not, it's not, it's not real. Man. But anyway, man, I just, you know, I, I, I always try to come correct with everybody, regardless of where I'm at, what I'm doing, what title I have. You know, I don't, I don't even like titles. Uh, we feel you. Yes. We're like that too. Appreciate and you know, that. it's really interesting. I do definitely want to talk deeper with you. We're, we're, we're going to be doing a podcast called Infinite Air Living, where we're going to be talking to a lot of our eye ministers and just sharing their story because your story is quite profound and you've gone to higher levels of the entertainment industry, you know, like the NFL, you did NFL, CFL. Yes, yes. And so these stories that you guys have in common is so important for these young yeah. athletes to understand yeah. and recognize what that industry is about and what it does to you and not yeah. to discourage anybody from doing what they need to do or what they want to do, but giving them the full awareness and the full information of what goes down yeah. and what happens and what, yeah. you know, why it's so important to really just bet on yourself. So we're definitely going to have you back for that on an exclusive with Mr. I Minister Jermaine Younger, aka the Big Five One, yes. here at Master yeah. Vibration 13 on our new podcast. Yeah. Um, but I Minister Solution, you wanted to share something before my this is gonna go down. Okay, so we're closing. Minute. In closing, just holding on to I still feel like I know it's hard for her to, 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 to perceive, but I believe that we all athletes and just looking at those energies around us as uh, players on your team, you know, think about some players, they are going to be limited. And in their limitation, it's like, it's not being mean, but it's they're uncoachable. And, and, and recognizing that, you know, that limitation is just what they where they want to exist, we have to kind of honor that and allow them to maybe play on another team and then you're going to have other t- other players that are are going to be existing in your mentality and mm-hmm. your frequency and be able to to hear the game plan and and agree to your game plan and, and want to work with you and want to hold the team concept as opposed to being an eye and those are who are going to be your team players and that's what it's about. So it's just not no real disrespect. It's just about you finding your players and those are going to be people that you're going to be able to talk to and communicate and they're going to be able to talk to you and communicate and y'all going to be able to move and be successful in love. And that's the community that we're creating here at MasterVibration13.com. So you are welcome to spread this word with anyone that you feel will be connected to this information that we're sharing. We know that it's not for everybody, but if you're here right now, then that means that it's for you, and that's really the only thing that matters. I say it to that. Thank you all so much for tuning in with us live. I'm Minister Jamison Beverly. Um, you have to check out on YouTube. It is, and it's also on MasterVibration13.com. Yes. But Jamison Beverly on YouTube in between rides. Yeah. 
in between rides. We're gonna give you guys just a little sneak rounds. peek. You're trying to you're trying to get it together. I'm in the solutions. Trying to get a little. We're trying to get a little setup done. Um, it's been my theme song, my, my theme music, because I got two songs. I'm telling y'all, y'all, hey. But you got to turn off the other thing first. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to do that. We have super beings on this yes. platform. We have people that have incredible and amazing talent. Jay Infinite. And we're going to continue to highlight and promote them and share them with our community. So we want to give you guys a sneak peek of... Hi, Minister Jameson Beverly. He's been, okay, so quick story. He's been in the entertainment industry. He's a phenomenal producer. The music and the entertainment industry is shit. So let's just keep it a buck, like they say nowadays. And so when you go in that industry, you learn really quick what it's about. And I, Minister Jameson, wasn't supposed to be in that industry like that. But he had to go through that process so that he could learn his lesson and so that he could evolve on his journey. And so through his journey, he has created some magnificent things. So we're going to give you a sneak peek of something that he's created. So check this out. Wait, he's, he's, he'll come with him to, mm, wait, mm, oh wait, he's, he's getting to the part. All right, here we go. I'm Minister Jameson Beverly. Thank you. Ache. We closing it out with you, baby. You people that's out there lying. Your karma gonna be so great. Your karma gonna be so proud. You make a heart for those that's true. You people that's out the line, your karma gon' be surprised. You make it hard for those that's trying. You people that's out the line, your karma gon' be so way. Your karma gon' be surprised. You make it hard for those that's trying. Huh? You are not alone. That's why you hear the songs that you like just listen. And the spirit listen. The battle's won, but it's dark outside. That's okay, from the dark comes light. This is therapy for me. I ain't chasing nobody's dreams. It's how I feel to be vulnerable. I ain't living by my will, so I feel honorable. Ain't no honor no more, nigga. I ain't be when it's rough. Let me see you when it's tough. We ain't running no more. But apparently I need it. Damn it, it's egregious. Falling all the teachers. Papa was a preacher. Mama was a leader. My uncles was achievers. That's all I had. That's all I had. Not no liars. But even if I did, shit, it wasn't conscious. They was taught all the nonsense, but somehow gave me options. I call that fortune, because most homies that I know never had guidance. Never had that guide sense. They never had options. Yeah, I said they, they never had guidance. Yeah, they never had that guide sense. They was led by nonsense, yeah. So we gon' turn this round up. 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 Turn this realm 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 up.
attention, nigga, this the feelings of a real one. Never had a really vision, never on the millions. Me and my brothers and sisters, we out here healing. I ain't got no time for that drama, keep your illness. I need some realness in these streets. I need, I need some realness. I'm gonna be like, tell me if you feel this. I do this for the underserved in my spirits. Undefeated in the gym, can you feel it? Niggas talking cash and no bank for that bullshit. Hey. talking war, but they caught up in their feelings. Man, you can't be, man, you can't be serious. The truth, the only thing I want to deal with. Got no main mistakes, so I never really feel it. Uh-huh. Ain't no give up in me, that's the only path to fail it. Uh-huh. I've been weak, nigga, rock steady uh-huh. like a whaler. See God in my soul like a tailor. Niggas wrong with heaven, but they mind bound in hell, earth. Mother nature, can you fail her? She the real drug and the motherfucking dealer. Uh-huh. Yeah, this is how it goes. I'm an infant and there I got we gon' turn this realm up. 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 Y'all can catch this in 24 hours in your Apple store. Turn this realm up. Support this artist. I'm going to say Mr. Beverly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jay Infinite. So much. A.K.A. Jay Beasy. Ache. I love, I love, I love.